What's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers. Hanging out with my buddy, my boy, John Barnes. I'm going to call you secondary manager, but I think there's another add-in title in, in there, isn't there? I got, I've got more titles than I know what to do with. Um, officially, I oversee secondary. I'm not the secondary manager anymore. That's uh, Brad Chattel, who is the okay. smarter, more agile version of me. Um, Agreed. But um, technically, I oversee three departments. I oversee secondary marketing, post-closing, and servicing. But again, there's far smarter people that are doing the day-to-day -day for it. I get to okay. take their credit. Okay. So, but you've been doing this for a long, long time, John. Yes. Okay. And so, I brought, I'm trying to find my the Facebook feed on here. So, oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I thought it'd be cool, man, to bring you on. And let's talk about, um, God, Brad Chattel is already on here. He's already ragging you. Uh, he was waiting for you to get, go live. So I thought it'd be really cool, man, to bring you on because it's a, uh, I mean, anyone watching this knows it is an absolute insane time um, in our market, in the stock market, in everyone's lives that are watching it. And so... I want to discuss some of the Federal Reserve cutting the rates because there was a lot of confusion with that. Um, and I, I also want to lead that into <clears throat> how the rates are reacting right now to the stock market. Um, and also what else anyone else wants to talk about out there, uh, whatever they ask us and whatever you feel like talking about, John. Yeah. For but sure. Before we get into that, you have a disclaimer. I do. So Tim has actually been after me to do this for like a week. Um, and I'm, I'm always really hesitant to do these things because in the position I'm in, a lot of people perceive that when I say something, it's advice and that I have some sort of crystal ball that's going to say, hey, I, because I've watched this stuff on a daily basis, I know what's going to happen. So I'm always a little hesitant to kind of give an honest opinion on kind of what's going on. Um, obviously, with what has taken place um, last night, when you hit me again on it, I was like, all right, I'm doing this, but I'm going to do this as John Barnes, not as Van Dyke Mortgage Corporation. So the, any of the opinions you hear here, these, this is me, my perspective, um, not representative of the company, my position, anything like that. And I actually laid out the, the handful of terms for you, which that was one of them. The other one was, I don't want to know anything walking into this, didn't want to know any questions you were going to go down. Because I do want this to be honest, and I want it to be some tangible feedback from a guy who spent 14 years sitting in the seat and seen this, seen many things. Um, and then the third one was, uh, you have to buy beer next time we're in the seat. <laughs> no problem. I'll put it on John Jones' expense account. Does that count? That works. That okay. works. As long as you ain't paying for it. Um, well, dude, before we get into all that stuff, though, um, you know, you got a unique position and do a great job. Um, I've always respected your opinion, Brad's as well. Um, in case he's watching this, I got to say that John Jones is out there too watching. Um, Johnny Bond, you're John Barnes. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> it's a, you know, a crazy situation for you to be in because every day you control the livelihood of the company. I mean, we you know, kind of live and die with the rates. You price one, you know, a couple days wrong and Van Dyke Mortgage is screwed a little bit, you know? So yeah. you're an important job, buddy. Some of the advice when we have, typically when we have a new person starting in secondary, that's some of the advice we give is, you know, it, we are kind of the main source of revenue for the company, not kind mm -hmm. of, we are. So the roughly 85 to 90% of the revenue that comes in passes through one of the departments that I oversee on a daily basis. Um, and small mistakes within that have the potential to put a screeching halt on a lot of those things. So it is a, a high attention to detail. You kind of have to have a feel for what's going on. Um, and you're always trying to look one or two steps ahead. But it's sometimes when you've got what's happened in the last three weeks, it's just grab a hold of your seat and, and hope you make it through the next eight hours until the end of the day and we get to restart tomorrow. So, and that's kind of what it's been the last couple of weeks. It's been, it's been interesting times. I will say it's not, you know, you, you hear all time lows and historic lows. This market has been incredibly irrational, but a lot of the, the 
the things that have happened are things we've seen in the past. We've seen 400 basis point drops in the stock market. We've seen 400 basis point drops in interest rates in a short period of time. We've also seen huge rallies over a short period of time. So you kind of have to draw on the experience you've seen from that stuff in the past. And while this isn't like those, you can also draw on some of the, the things that you've done in the past to react to them. So while this is uncommon times, there's some familiarity to some of the stuff too. Yeah, well, let's, um, okay, so let's let that, let, let's talk about that first thing because you're already rolling with it. Um, historically for us, when we follow rates, right? Like we're looking at it and we know the stock market's tanking. Historically, rates will go down, which is good for us, right? It'll go down with the stock market. And like, you're not seeing that now. Like it, it just, so you want to touch on that? Like what, what, yeah. what's, what, what's the market reacting to this causing? Because anyone watching this right now, rates have went up. Uh, how much was the rate increase yesterday? I mean, I saw deals almost a half point higher. Um, in some cases, it was more than a half point. Yeah. Um, so yesterday alone, we saw a 200 basis point movement in the mortgage-backed security market, um, which is, again, not uncommon. We've seen that in the past. It's uncommon from the perspective of you typically don't, I wouldn't have expected to see that this quickly. Um, so when you see a 200 basis point movement in the mortgage-backed security, that translates anywhere between eights to almost a full point in situations and in interest rate for what you're going to pay on a mortgage rate um, that gets passed through. So yesterday we had people to start the day that were quoting 3.875, 4%. And at the end of the day, they're quoting 4.7, 4.875, 5% in some cases, just from that market movement. Mm -hmm. Nothing else changed. Um, and the... So you mentioned the stock market. Typically when you see the stock market perform poorly, which it has, um, the reason for that is because money is either coming out or it's rapidly going into the wrong places in the stock market. In this case, it's been money, money's flying out of the stock market. Well, it has to go somewhere. So where's it gonna go? The Asian markets right now, with what's going on in China, uh, things are not great there. Europe has its own set of issues right now with Italy being shut down with the virus. Spain has issues. Pretty much every country is facing it right now. <clears throat> so where are they going to stick the money? Um, U.S. Treasuries are a good place, as is the mortgage-backed security market. Well, when you get increased demand in one of those markets, historically what you see is increased demand is going to lower the yield on those, which means interest rates are going to get lower. We haven't seen that same flow because three weeks ago we had an insane rally um we went from offering interest rates of roughly average borrower not to, don't hold us to this but somewhere around four to maybe four and three eighths on the high side for a 30-year fix to suddenly people were getting rate quotes of 2.875 three percent without notable discount without paying to get those interest wow. rates um that rally alone, and it was about a seven day window when they hit those, that rally alone brought in, I mean, it was an insane amount. I, I want to say it was like one point something trillion dollars worth of interest rate locks. That's more than we typically do in quarter and in a half a year as an industry. So you had all this volume come rushing in and it kind of overwhelmed everyone. We fortunately were in a situation where we could shoulder that as a, as a company, but there's a lot of people that couldn't. Um, you, you go out to the broker market right now, a lot of wholesalers are struggling to keep up with the volume. A lot of buyers of servicing are afraid they're gonna be struggling to keep up with that volume that's hitting. So you have this mountain of production. These borrowers, these loans, that are going to close. Some of them have closed, some of them are going to close. And you've got people who want to buy those. It's it's a good asset to keep. They want the servicing rights. They want to take your their years. But you ha again, it's a mountain of production that's coming through the pipe. So they have to something called throttling. They basically say, okay, we're going to slow business down, and we're going to do that through the price that we see, which is going to impact the interest rates that you see as well. Um, and that hit us really, really hard. 
So you're seeing a mortgage-backed security market right now, which says we should be offering rates somewhere between 4% and 4 and 3 eighths. And the people that are buying the servicing right now just aren't there. Um, they don't want to buy that stuff right now because there's still that mountain of production that's yet to come. So that's the main reason we haven't seen interest rates as good as it should be, is you've got this throttling effect that's going on of people trying to control their value because they're overwhelmed. Um, plus, I, there are a lot of companies that have been able to, to handle this volume, um, and they're very good ones. So the, there's still plenty of opportunity out there, but we just haven't seen it pass through yet. Yeah, and so like we heard, I mean, I've been hearing stories. I don't think I've seen anyone yet shut down, but you know, you listen to Barry Habib some that uh, he, he even questioning like if some companies weren't going to be able to make it out of that. Yeah. You, yeah. Any, any insight to that? Um, Won't be Van Dyke, by the way. Tell him, John. No, we'll no, absolutely will not be Van Dyke. Freaking um, money out out there, man. The the scary thing with it right now is there's so much going on in terms of the world. Um, with this whole Corona COVID thing that's floating around, you've got you've got staff that's working from home, and there's the possibility, the uncertain possibility that um, there could there could be a a Stafford Act full enablement of like business shuts down, economy shuts down. Worst case scenario, doom and gloom. Um, and that's kind of the scary thing is we weren't prepared as an industry for the volume that's coming in. And that's kind of the frightening thing of, okay, it's there. We want, we all want to get to it and we all want to do it, but what's the cost to get that done? Are, are we going to be, you know, spending a ton of money and overtime to get this stuff done? Um, and that's why there's a balancing act to it. I wouldn't say, so I know Barry and, and a lot of people out there have, have come out and said, you know, the implications of this are incredibly high. I don't think they're that high because we're all going to be going through the soup together. So um, I wouldn't say anybody's necessarily going to go out of business over this, but I think you're going to see the real estate market change a lot more than that in this situation. The real estate market, how do you mean? So um, right now, Tim, let's say you are a seller. Do you really want 30 or 40 people walking through your house right now? Yeah. No, I, I, I feel it, man. With the, yep. And, and you, as a buyer, do you want to go and walk through 20 or 30 houses? No. So you, you're looking at some creative alternatives of, okay, maybe maybe we're looking at virtual tours. Well, how many how many people are going to be comfortable buying a home that they haven't actually seen with their own eyes? Mm -hmm. Um Having having the mortgage side of things, where all of a sudden we moved a lot of core functions home, is, is that going to be something that's sustainable? Is that maybe the future of where the mortgage market goes, where you have a the vast majority of your employees working from home instead of coming into an office every day? Um, there are going to be a lot of changes that I think come out of this. Plus, everyone right now I think is realizing how unprepared not only not only the real estate industry, but just business in general was for something of the scale to hit. Of, you know, there's the possibility of layoffs coming for service employees. That's a scary thing. You saw Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and, and HUD come out in recent days and say, there's a suspension. You can't initiate foreclosure or eviction right. for a lot of employees, which is a lot of borrowers, which is a wonderful thing. That is something that was absolutely needed. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that kind of showed we were not ready for something of this scale. Um, and I think that's some of the changes that you'll see come is how are we better prepared for the next time if this comes around and when this goes away, um, what does the market look like after this? Because we're going to find some creative solutions around this stuff. Business isn't going to stop through this. The economy is not going to come to a screeching halt. It's how do we come up with creative ways to get around it? Yeah, dude, it's funny you, you bring that up. I mean, this has nothing to do with rates, but just, uh, how people are going to do business in general. I think a lot of people are going to find out that they can work remote, um, that businesses will save costs on, you know, rent and office space and things like that. Um, but, you know, I have just in the last probably couple of days, just in conversations with buyers we've pre-approved, um, <clears throat> you know, I've had a couple pump the brakes, man. Like they're, hey, let's see what happens. You know, they're kind of like a, they're not canceling, 
you know, but they're going to be in a holding pattern. Um, but I've got other ones that are like <laughs> full speed ahead, man. Like, you let's know, get this done. Yeah, let's they're like, I want this house. And uh, a perfect example on rates. So, had a con right before I jumped on with you, I had to, I was wrapping up a call with a buyer. Contract came in um, uh, two days ago, rate low fours, right? Now, 4.75. And just got under contract and I'm talking to him about everything and filling him on the market and how important it is for him to know this is where it's at now. And this is the risky run going to the closing date. If you don't lock or if you do, it's your choice, Mr. Borrower. And he's like, no, nah, we're probably going to want to lock in the rate and be done. But I didn't get that pushback of like, oh, this rate sucks. And, you know, I'm out of here. He was just like, this is the way it is, and he's moving on with it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's that's the most prudent thing that we in the industry can do is to educate people of so they can make the decision. Um, I know they look to us to be the experts and the ones with the most knowledge, but you know, given the situation that's going on, it, the, the one that always cracks me up is people say, well, I saw advertise that I could get three and a half today. Well, yeah, anybody can get three and a half today. That interest rate is out there. It's how much you're going to pay to get it. <laughs> right. so, you know, you can get any interest rate and any loan term possible that you want out there. Someone will, will do it. It's a guarantee. 1%, someone's going to give you 1%. Um, right. You want 0%, someone's going to give you 0%, but you got to put 100% down. Yeah, so, that, so many good lines to that. <laughs> so so there, there's but let, let's, that opportunity. Let's talk on one thing, though, dude. I, I want to get something across to everyone. And it's very important, I think, especially in our business when we're having the consultation with these borrowers, is that a lot of people out there are guessing. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, do you agree with that? Like they are guessing cool. on, I think rates are going to go down. I think they're going to get worse. I think stock market's going to rebound, right? You know, like everyone's guessing. I had a, uh, had a college professor who taught statistics. And he said, most people that, that truly love statistics end up becoming economists at some point on some level. And to be a successful economist, you just need to be correct one out of every two times. 50% <clears throat> of the time you have to be correct because everyone's going to forget your failures. And that one time that you are correct on a big scale, you're, you wear that on your chest with, a, with an <laughs> and then around it. I was a superhero. I hit this one yep. on the head. <laughs> Nobody honestly knows that the, the markets right now are moving so fluidly um, and it's, it's a constantly evolving thing. So yes, there's educated guesses, but we're all guessing at this point. Nobody knows what interest rates are going to be tomorrow. Um, hindsight is really the only thing that gives you that indication of, to be able to say, yep, this is why it happened and here was the things that led to it. But yeah, it's a complete guess. None of us know. Right. And so, and so, and, but, uh, on that note, <laughs> where are rates going to go, John? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're either going to go up or down. I can tell you that much. Oh boy. Um, I, I will, I will say there is, I can make a case for both sides and I'll present both. Okay. Let's hear them. So this is like, you're going to make a case for rates getting worse and rates getting better. Okay. So I'll start with worse. Okay. So we saw in, in the last three, three and a half weeks, we have seen, 1,400 basis points worth of market movement up and down. That is extreme. I can't find another 30 day window when we have seen that much movement up and down. So we had this huge rally. Rates go down into the, the low, low threes, high twos in some situations. <clears throat> and if you're looking at like 10 or 15 years, there were people that were locking in at like two and a quarter, two and three eighths on a regular basis. So we see this huge rally. Um, we we absolutely hammer the market. Anybody who's out there that could refi, odds are you guys got a phone call, you got an email, you got a mailer, you got something telling you, hey, rates are low. You saw an advertisement on TV. Then we saw a correction, and market the market basically said, whoa, 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 we went too far, too fast. Pull it back here. We need this is where we should be. So you saw a very rapid drop. We saw 300 basis points over a matter of about 400 days just fly out of the market. And then for whatever reason, and I, you know, there there is underlying logic to it, but the market took off again and we rallied and we went right back to that peak. The problem was, as we we touched base briefly previously, 
the servicer said, nope, my, my pipelines are full. I already have the stuff that I'm planning to, I'm gonna buy a piece of the stuff that came over here. I don't need any of this right now. So we didn't see the full realization of that rally. And then yesterday and the day before, we, we saw the retraction. And the way I can describe this is, it's like a grandfather clock, the pendulum swings. Uh, you swing one way, there's gonna be an equal and opposite reaction the other way, because the market's gonna keep swinging both ways. You might not swing as far the other, other direction when you actually go, but it's going to swing. There's a bounce, there's a correction, the market's gonna react. A piece of this was the Fed's decision to get back into quantitative easing, which is where they're gonna be out buying treasury bills and mortgage-backed securities. Um, I believe they committed to 500 billion of treasuries and 200 billion of mortgage-backed securities. That's a lot, that is a ton of volume. Um, and basically what happens with that is when you've got increased demand, yields go down, and in theory, interest rates improve. Um, that was the same philosophy that got us through from 2009 on to when they stopped when they stopped doing this in 2016 2017 so my case for rates getting worse are basically that you now have an outside influence which is impacting the markets and the sophisticated actual investors out there are going to play this they're going to figure out when the fed is buying they're going to influence the market and on top of it we have this whole circus of of refinances that we just got through, um, there's the possibility interest rates get worse. As you're seeing economic numbers, both domestically and globally, not look good, continue to get worse as unemployment numbers go up, as people are reacting to this coronavirus and COVID stuff, um, there's the, the likelihood that you're gonna see interest rates increase significantly. Into the fives, and that's just gonna be economic news, investors trying to play the market, and you've got, a, you've got a domestic influence, which is artificially controlling the market. Um, the worst case scenario for this though, is still you're, only, you're, you're looking at interest rates in the fives, um, five and an eighth, five and a quarter. We, we've been there in the very recent past. Um, last year. Ago. Yeah, and at the beginning of last year, we were in that same exact situation. First quarter. Yep. The opposite side of this is that rates improve. And there is... Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay, back it up. Let me get ready. Rates are improving. Let's hear it. Come on, man. I need some news. <laughs> um, the, the case for that is, honestly, a lot of the stuff I just said. You have the Fed influencing the market. And the reason why we had the, the refinance rallies we had in 2012 and 2015 is because the Fed was influencing the market. They were artificially keeping mortgage interest rates up because they wanted to stimulate the economy. They're going to be looking at the same exact situation as we're we're potentially approaching a recession no matter how you look at it if this corona situation extends much longer than three to four weeks there will be a recession purely from the numbers standpoint consumers aren't going to be spending our our gross domestic product has compromised 70 percent of consumer spending if people aren't going to the grocery store aren't going to movies aren't going out to eat that money's not going to um, so when you have that, now the Fed's going to step in. They're going to try to stimulate the economy in any way they can. That's where they stepped in with this quantitative easing. That's where they stepped in and lowered the, the benchmark note rate. Right now is basically at zero. They're trying to stimulate money going into the economy somehow, which, by the way, if you don't, don't have stock in Amazon right now or Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever it is, Great time to buy that because they are going to be killing it for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, but the, the case for interest rates going lower is that you have the Fed involved now and they're going to do everything they can to hold interest rates in the same range that they did previously, somewhere between three and a quarter and 4.75. They don't care what that number is. They just want consumers to be spending money. They want money flowing in the economy. On top of that, you're going to see, again, some very bad news in terms of the global economy. And that's not gonna stop people from investing. And when you look at, um, like you go to Fidelity, your financial advisors, they have certain covenants they have to meet. They have to make sure that money that they're pulling out and moving around, it has to be invested somewhere. They can't just have it sitting in a mattress somewhere. 
So they're going to be investing their money somewhere. U.S. economy is always a safe bet. You still have treasuries, which are going to be holding. You still have the, the mortgage-backed security. Even the stock market will come back. Um, so there's going to be money flowing into our economy from that perspective. Is there the chance that we see interest rates in the twos again? Yeah, there is a chance. Um, I, w I have given up on saying never and ever again. So there is the chance we see it, but realistically what you're gonna see is interest rates hanging somewhere in the threes to maybe the upper fours, maybe occasionally touching 5%. And that's gonna be because the Fed is influencing it and making sure that it stays in that range. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> All right, buddy. Um, I think we'll probably wrap this up, but I got to ask you uh, about the Federal Reserve. We didn't touch yes. on this. Um, this is a question when it happened Sunday, phone just blew up. Um, you know, <laughs> Fed, you know, emergency lowers the rate to zero, uh, basically. And a lot of the questions were, and by the way, I want to say this, and I want everyone to know I'm not making fun of anybody. Um, you know, this everyone, you know, I bet you half our industry probably thought mortgage rates were going to go to zero. Um, you know, if I had to guess, I bet you there's a lot of people out there that work for us or not us, but, uh, you know, mortgages. Work in the industry. Yeah. They thought it was going to go to zero. So when the mortgage rates or when uh, the federal reserve lowered the rate to zero, um, please explain on how that doesn't mean that mortgage rates are going to follow suit. That they're not going to go down with that. So the best comparison you can use is an apples and oranges comparison. They're both proof. They're both interest rates. One's orange, one's red or green, depending on what kind of apple. The federal funds rate, which is what the Fed uses to influence interest rates, that is something that member banks can use to borrow from, from a short, for a short period of time. So say you get a member bank that they want to make a bunch of auto loans overnight, but they don't have the funds liquid, they can go to the Fed cash window, tap for $200 million, they get the money overnight, and they move their assets around and they pay it back two days later. That's where the Fed funds rate comes in is the Fed is saying, we want banks to continue lending money out, regardless of what it is, um, to, to influence and stimulate the economy. When you look at mortgage rates, those only come from one thing and one thing alone. That is the mortgage-backed security market. Um, while there, there is a connection in the middle from this thing called consumer, um, consumer sentiment, um, they usually call it the CPI, consumer price index, things like that. Um, it's not directly related. The Fed funds rate is strictly for member banks borrowing money so they can continue to lend money. Mortgage rates are tied to mortgage-backed securities. And that is going to be things that when you get a home loan, odds are your loan ends up into a mortgage-backed security, which is traded on Wall Street. And it'll be part of uh, anywhere between a million dollars and a $500 million pool of loans along with it. Um, the two are not directly connected. So when the Fed lowers, they're saying, banks, we want you to keep lowering, keep sending out money. It has absolutely nothing to do with mortgage rates. Not connected at all. And it's a common mistake everyone makes. Yeah, it, and it's understandable. I mean, if you're the average Joe or even, you know, a lot of uh, realtors out there and all you hear is rates cut to zero, you know, and that's the headline, uh, you know, you're not reading a little deeper where maybe it's like, this does not affect mortgage rate. You know, like they'll tell you, you know, in paragraph six of the story, you know, that, so yeah. it, it, it's very common for that to happen. Um, do you have anything else you want to add to that? You look like you had something else you want to say. It's not going, it, well, and that's the thing. It's not going to impact your savings interest rate, your CDs. It's not going to impact your auto loan, your home loan. All those are completely separate. Um, th this is just a way for banks to, to gain access to additional funds that they can keep lending out to the community. Right. So, um, all the other interest rates, they're set completely different path. Gotcha. So uh, I think we covered a lot there, man. You killed it. I do want to find out though from you and your job when you have a day like yesterday <clears throat> um, where it's increase, 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 I'm sure that's less, what's more stressful that or a few weeks ago when rates just boom, like 
bottomed out and they were the lowest ever. Yesterday's got to be more stressful than it going lower, right? Um, on your side, yesterday is far more stressful. No, I know it's more stressful on my side. I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, so from my side, we have a script. And that script basically is when X happens in the market, our reaction is Y. And we follow that script. Every single smart lender out there that has been doing this for longer than two years, they have this script of when the market reacts, here's our reaction. Yesterday was a little frustrating from the standpoint of typically when we're going to increase interest rates, we want to see it drop and then it goes sideways. So we know what that floor is. We never stopped going down yesterday. It was like an hour and a half of just the slow grind of premiums going down, interest rates going down. That was more the frustrating part yesterday is we didn't know when this was going to stop. Um, in terms of stress levels, there's nothing we can do with it. It's completely out of our control. Um, I would say the more stressful piece is when you're seeing interest rates go down um, because there is this rush of people saying, okay, now's my time, I'm gonna strike. And that's when we get busy. Typically when rates are getting worse, people kind of want to take a wait and see and go, all right, is it, how bad is this going to be? And things slow down. But because we have a script for everything, because we know what our reaction is going to be to everything, there's not a ton of stress when it comes to the market. Um, there are a lot of people that sweat what's going to happen, but uh, from my seat, it's not, it's not that big of a struggle. The rally is probably the harder part when, when you guys come in and start hammering us on locks. Yeah, so the, your your job level just goes up in stress when you're busier, which is when rates are going down or they're lower, just more locks for you to do. Huh. Interesting. I, in my head, I just imagine you with your head on fire, like, as rates are going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there have been days where we're, we're running around like that, but... Um, uh, LO's blasting you left and right on chat. What the hell? Can you help me on this one? I, I just, I was ready to lock it. We, we get that a lot, but um, no. Yeah. It, and honestly, we've got a really good group of LOs. I, I promise this wasn't going to be about, about Van Dyke, but we have a really good group of LOs who are very understanding. I know sometimes it gets really hot. Um, small story on this one, then I promise I'll let you find this out. Um, when we were going through that rally, I was getting text messages and emails from LOs at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. There were people that were working 17, 18 hours a day to get through this stuff. Um, so the commitment that we saw out of the originator community, ours as well as industry-wide, um, they are focused on, on what, doing what's best right now. Um, and it was actually really impressive to see the commitment out of that, out of our origination force and what they did to to get the volume in that they did. Well, not to get the volume in, but you know, how many, I mean, I know just in the stuff we did, you know, we saved clients thousands and thousands of dollars, yeah. you know, just in that small window and, you know, live and learn. Some of us, you know, probably didn't, you know, you just, you don't know about that window until it's really gone, you know? Yeah. So. And that's another one more important thing to say is just because interest rates went up does not mean that a refinance is out for a lot of homeowners. There's, there's still a ton of equity in the housing market right now. Cash out is still a very viable thing um, for, for people over the age of 62 re reverse mortgages are still a very viable option that's out there. Um, it, it is still very much worth having the conversations, even with interest rates going up a dropping term, being able to go from a 30 year down to a, a 15 or a 20 year cutting time off. There are conversations to be had still, even with interest rates increasing. Well, especially if you have a lot of equity in your heavy and credit card debt, like that's a, that's a, yeah. a, a conversation people need to have for sure. Like JB, we need to get this wrapped up, bro. Um, All right, Tim. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I know I've been after you for a while, so thank you for finally caving. Um, that was fun. Thank you for staying on me. Yeah, thanks for people watching out there. A lot of people, Stacy, Diana, John Jones, got a lot of VD, Van Dyke peeps out there watching. So appreciate you guys. And Brad Chattel kept chiming in on here for you. Um, and our underwriting. Hopefully all good things. Lindsay was in there, Lindsay Cunha. Um, so, guys, appreciate you guys watching. John, I appreciate you too. 
uh, everyone out there, if you made it this far, um, stay positive, keep moving forward, uh, control what you can control, right, buddy? Control what you control, wash your hands, most important thing. Wash your hands, there you go. All right, you guys, we'll appreciate you, take care, thank you. Have, oh, if I can help you, call me, 239-910-5668. I'm always here for you, your boy Tim. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. No problem.